Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. Every week, we celebrate our supporters through shout-outs and personal birthday messages. We think this is also a fun way for us to hear about all the amazing places that you, our listeners, come from. Hello to Cecilia and Dominic from Lutherville, Maryland. And hello to Gabrielle who just moved to London from New York City and recently started year one at a new school. Mommy, Daddy, and Cookie are so proud of you and promise to create great family memories in London. Happy belated birthday to Naomi in Temple, Georgia, who turned 11 on August 8th. Daddy and Mama love you and are so proud of the young lady you are becoming. Happy belated birthday to Harrison in Austin, Texas, who turned nine on August 31st, from your mom and brother Benny. Happy belated birthday to Ozan. Mommy, Daddy, and Aileen love you very much. Happy belated birthday to Lena from Danville, California. Love mom, dad, and Rachel. You are thoughtful, kind, and courageous, and they're proud of you. Keep being silly. You got this. So skibbity. Happy belated 8th birthday to Penelope on September 12th. Love Mommy, Daddy, Zubin, Phoebe, and Jude. We love you so much. Happy belated 7th birthday to Madeline Therese in Sparta, Wisconsin. Mommy, Daddy, and Izzy love you lots. Happy birthday to Amelia in Temple, Georgia, who turned seven on September 15th. Daddy, Mama, and Naomi love you so much. And happy belated birthday to Sydney, who turned six on September 15th. Happy birthday to Cade. Mom, Dad, Hayes, and Remy think you are the best seven-year-old in the world and love you. Happy 6th birthday, sweet Emma girl, on September 16th. Mommy, Daddy, Olivia, Noah, and Cooper love you very much. Happy 9th birthday to Declan from Olympia, Washington. Love Dad, Mom, Emma, Chloe, Gus, and Eli. We love you times infinity, Bubba. Happy 7th birthday to Evelina on September 21st. Mama and Papa love you. And happy fourth birthday to Nolan Devine in Montana. Love from Daddy, Mommy, Emmy, and Davy. You are our favorite little Noli bear in the whole world. Love you so, so much. You're simply the best. ka Happy birthday to you all. To reserve your special shout-out, please visit sleeptightstories.org slash support. We can't wait to celebrate with you. Now, on to our story. Red arrives home soaked. It has been raining all day and she does not like the rain. Her mother got her boots and a jacket, but they are green, green. Red gets dried off and stares out the window at the rain. Alexa starts a group chat and they talk about their plans for the playground mystery. The group all agree to get started the next day. And just before they hang up, Alexa mentions that Rachel found an old article written by Dr. Hart that talks about strange phenomena. The Transfer Student, Part 23 Red shook herself like a dog before she pushed open the front door of her house. She carefully put her backpack in the door first and then stepped in making a terrible, squishy noise as she walked in. She felt like yelling in frustration. Ah! Closing the door behind her, she stood in the entryway for a moment, dripping. She was completely soaked. 
Her shoes, once shiny and pristine, which looked just like the ones she wore on Mars, now ruined. She looked down at them with a sinking feeling. They'd never had rain like this on Mars. It hadn't rained in millennia. She never had to worry about squishy shoes or soggy hair back there. She wiped a wet strand of hair out of her face. Why am I even bothering with this hair thing? No one cared about hair on Mars. All day long, from the moment she got out of bed, the rain had pounded down without mercy. Of course, it decided to rain even harder the second she stepped off the bus. Wet clothes sticking to her skin had to be one of the worst feelings in the universe. She thought of the green rubber boots her mother had bought her, green of all colors, and the matching rain jacket. No way was she going to wear those. Mom, are you home? Red called, hoping for the comforting sight of her mother in the kitchen. She was almost always there. Silence. Where are you? Still no answer. With a resigned sigh, Red trudged upstairs, leaving a trail of damp footprints on the floor. She peeled off her wet clothes and threw on some warm, comfortable sweats. These earth clothes might be one of the few things she actually liked wearing here. As she changed, she glanced at her rain-soaked reflection in the mirror. She didn't look like she belonged on this planet, even when she tried. Back downstairs, Red went straight for the cookie jar, one of the Earth's finest inventions. Always stocked, always dependable. She grabbed a handful and set the kettle on to boil. She wasn't big on milk with cookies like some of her classmates. The thought of drinking animal milk made her gag. So disgusting. Her favorite tea, something called gray or whatever, would do just fine. As she waited for the kettle to whistle, she stared out the window, watching the relentless rain beat against the glass. There went all their plans for after school. The playground stakeout was a wash, literally. Her mother's footsteps could be heard coming down the stairs just as the kettle boiled. Mom, Red grumbled, grabbing her tea and plopping down at the kitchen table. Look outside. It's a catastrophe. It's raining so hard, it's going to wash everything away. Which wouldn't be so bad if it meant we could fly back to Mars. Her mother smiled softly. Shh. Red, calm down. You know we can't talk like that. People will either think you're crazy or worse. They might learn the truth. Besides, we can't leave. Red sighed, slumping in her chair. Her mother walked to the window, gazing out at the rain with a faraway look. You should be celebrating, her mother said after a moment. This rain is one of the most wonderful things imaginable. Back on. She hesitated, choosing her words carefully. At our old home, we would have celebrated the ability of the planet to produce rain again. The surface becoming lush with life, so we wouldn't have to live underground as much. Red looked at her mother, who seemed lost in memories. But here... It's just wet and green. Her mother laughed softly. Maybe, but maybe one day you'll see it the way I do. Red took another sip of her tea, her mind still stuck on Mars. She wasn't sure she'd ever see Earth the way her mother did, no matter how much rain fell. Earth might be full of water, but it still felt dry to her, missing something essential. Look at the neighbors in the backyard, her mother said, 
gesturing toward the window. There are kids outside jumping in puddles and getting all muddy. It looks fun. You should try it sometime. It might change your perspective about your new home. Red glanced out the window, watching the kids laughing and splashing around in the rain. They were soaked, covered in mud, but they didn't seem to care. It was so strange to her how Earth kids found fun in something as messy and uncomfortable as this. She couldn't imagine it. Um, yeah, I think I'll just finish my tea and cookies in my room, Red replied doing her best to hide her discomfort at the thought of joining them. The idea of getting soaked again was unbearable, and the last thing she wanted was more squishy shoes. Upstairs, Red sat at her desk, staring out the window as the rain continued to blur the world outside. The constant streaming water distorted the view, making it seem like the whole planet was swimming. Her thoughts drifted back to Mars. She could almost feel the dry, dusty red soil beneath her feet again. The endless grayness of life underground. The sharp, dry air that always filled her lungs. I miss home, she whispered to herself. But Earth is so alive so willing to support you, if only it wasn't so annoying. She leaned her chin in her hand, thinking about the lessons she'd learned in history class back on Mars. The great event that had forced everyone underground, transforming the surface into a barren wasteland. Life on Mars required constant effort a delicate balance that people worked hard to maintain. I wonder what my friends are doing now. Red's thoughts wandered to her old life. Do they still hang out at the outer rings and talk? Do they still joke about whatever? The memories felt distant, almost like they belonged to someone else. She wasn't sure if her friends had changed or if she had. Red took a sip of her tea after taking a bite of her cookie. Earth is so strange, she thought, wrapping her hands around her warm cup. It's messy and loud, and people do the weirdest things, like jumping in puddles for fun. Yet, even as she thought it, a small smile tugged at the corner of her mouth. Alexa would splash in those puddles, She could almost hear Alexa's laugh, loud and unbothered, echoing in her mind. It surprised her how quickly Alexa had become a friend. I didn't even want to make friends here, Red admitted to herself. But somehow... Then there was Charlie, always sniffling, always making jokes, even when his nose was running. Rachel, with her endless books and quiet insights, the one who always seemed to notice things no one else did. And Kurt, so calm and steady, but always full of surprises, especially when it came to sports or anything competitive. Red had started feeling comfortable around them, less like the outsider she felt when she first stepped foot in her new school. When did that happen? She was becoming part of something here. Despite everything in her that resisted, despite her loyalty to Mars and her memories of home, she was connecting to this place, to these people. It felt confusing, like she was betraying her Martian self just by caring. How can I belong in both places? she wondered. Can I even belong here at all? She shifted in her seat, watching the rain slide down the window in lazy streaks. She had never expected Earth to feel like more than a stop on the way to something else. And yet, 
it wasn't just Earth. It was Alexa, Charlie, Kurt, and Rachel. It was the mystery club, the school, the endless little adventures they found themselves in. She was surprised to find that she didn't hate it. Could it eventually feel like home? Then her phone started chiming. Red reached into her bag and pulled it out. It was Alexa requesting a video chat. Red had only talked to her briefly during class and had apologized for not bringing the box with Dr. Hart's materials. She didn't want it to get soaked in the rain, so she'd left it at home. Alexa's freckled face and bright red hair filled the screen. Hey, Red, dry yet? You looked as cheerful as a wet cat this morning. You shouldn't let the rain get you down. It's fun to play in. But seriously, you need some rain boots and a coat. I'm not really into the whole rain thing. And the boots I have? Well, they're not quite my style, Red replied glancing down at her tea. So what's up? I figured we didn't really get a chance to talk about the case today, since everyone was doing their own thing, Alexa said. So I invited everyone for a quick chat. Okay. Sorry again for not bringing the box. I didn't want it to get wet, Red said, feeling a little guilty. No worries, Alexa reassured her. Before she could say more, Charlie's face popped up on the screen, and before he could even say hello, he sneezed loudly. I felt that one, Alexa joked. I guess your mom's latest concoction didn't work? Yeah, I'm sneezing again, Charlie replied, his eyes watery and his nose a painful shade of red. I think it's the rain. Maybe I'm allergic to it. Well, that's something you and Red have in common. She seems allergic to the rain, too, Alexa teased. Rachel and Kurt joined the call next. Hi, all, Rachel said, her face barely visible behind a book. Hey, Charlie, you look like that reindeer Santa has, Kurt said with a smile. Rudolph, Charlie replied, sniffling. Red hesitated wanting to ask who Santa and Rudolph were, but stopping herself. They must be important to Earth culture, she thought, not wanting to sound clueless. Yeah, your nose is super red. You sneezing again? Kurt asked. Yep, Charlie sighed dramatically. It's my curse. So, other than catching up with my besties, Kurt continued, What's the reason for this call? I only have so much time. I missed my afternoon snack, and I really don't want to get hangry. Red and I talked last night about how we could proceed with the latest case, Alexa began, her voice full of energy. And I thought I could fill you all in. If the weather cooperates, and I think it will, we can get started tomorrow. She paused and then laughed. Oh, and after that, we can definitely talk about Mrs. Ferguson's wild new hairstyle. It was aliens from Mars, Charlie said with a dramatic sniffle. Just let her finish, will you? Rachel complained, finally putting down her book. Yes, Red thought to herself. Let's forget about Martians for a moment. Alexa rolled her eyes but kept going. So, here's the plan. We start by checking the playground after school tomorrow. We'll look for any clues, scratch marks, weird objects, anything that seems out of place. Then we'll talk to some of the younger kids who use the playground, see if they've noticed anything strange, like those clinking sounds they mentioned. Maybe they saw someone suspicious. Red nodded as Alexa spoke, though she already knew the details. And then, Alexa continued, we could do a stakeout. We'll take turns watching the playground after school, bring some snacks, maybe even some blankets if it's cold, 
and see if anyone shows up to move more equipment. If we're lucky, we might catch the culprit in action. Binoculars at the ready, Charlie muttered, rubbing his nose. Maybe they'll spot Martians. Ignoring him, Alexa finished. We'll piece together everything we find, and hopefully, we'll solve this before the weekend. Simple, right? Red found herself nodding along with the rest of the group, even though she still didn't quite get Earth's fascination with playgrounds. But the mystery itself was starting to feel interesting. And for once, she was looking forward to getting involved. That sounds like a good plan, Rachel said, finally putting her book down. Yep, I'm all in, Kurt added. What's this about Mrs. Ferguson's hair? The group burst into laughter as Alexa dove into an animated description of their teacher's wild new hairstyle. Something about it being teased up so high it almost touched the ceiling. Rachel added her own commentary, comparing it to a bird's nest, and even Charlie managed a chuckle between sneezes. Red smiled along but wasn't really paying attention. Hairstyles still didn't make much sense to her. On Mars, no one spent time worrying about how their hair looked. There were more important things to think about. She zoned out for a moment, her mind wandering back to the rainy day, the sound of water hitting her windows, and the memories of her old life on Mars. Suddenly, Alexa's voice snapped her back to the present. Oh, And speaking of wild stories, Alexa said, grinning. Rachel found something interesting in the school library, an old article written by Dr. Hart. Red blinked, her interest immediately piqued. Dr. Hart? Yeah, apparently she wrote about some strange phenomena happening in the area around where you live now, Alexa said, laughing. It's pretty funny, like... She was obsessed with the idea that weird happenings were happening right under people's noses. Red's heart skipped a beat. Strange phenomena? Could this be more than just an old article? She thought back to the documents they found in the box. Maybe Dr. Hart's research wasn't just wild theories. Maybe there was more to the story than they had realized. Red's curiosity grew as she wondered if Dr. Hart had discovered something important, something connected to her family. Do you have the article? Red asked, trying to sound casual, but her mind was already racing. Not with me, but I can grab it tomorrow, Rachel replied, leaning back into her book. It's probably nothing serious, just one of those quirky old scientist things. But what if it's not, Red thought. Her mind was now buzzing with questions. Maybe Dr. Hart had been right all along. As the video call ended and her screen went dark, Red sat quietly at her desk, torn between two instincts. She knew she needed to steer her friends away from the Dr. Hart mystery before they uncovered too much before they got too close to the truth about Martians, about her. But something deep inside her couldn't help wondering if Dr. Hart's research held secrets even she didn't know. Secrets about the AID or the resettlement program that might change everything. For the first time, she felt like she was standing on the edge of something bigger than she had ever imagined. And that is the end of this part. Good night. Sleep tight.